said just look around to be awake and dreaming. I'm David Comstock. I'm the current president of the Board of Trustees for CUC. Um, Unitarian Universalism broken into two pieces. The first piece, Unitarian, is about uh, unity. It's about uh, one divine love. And the second piece with you know, Universalism is really that that divine love is universal through all people. Um, it reminds me from some of the yoga that I've done of uh, the word Namaste that they say at the end. Basically saying the light within me um, sees the light within you, that that uh, divine spark is universal within all people. So that's kind of an overview of our spiritual um, backbone and then how we actually put that into practice is through our seven principles. Our seven principles were something that uh, all of the congregations throughout the United States met through a democratic process to come up with these core principles. Uh, the first one is the inherent worth and dignity of every person. So I respect the inherent worth of you and do my best to treat you with dignity. Our second one has to do with justice, equity, and compassion in all of our relationships. So I try to model that and start with myself and utilizing those principles and the way I behave. We try to model it and utilize this as a congregation and that we hope from there it spreads out into the larger community. The inherent worth and dignity of, of every, every person. person. Justice, equity, uh, and compassion in, in human, human relations. relations. Acceptance of one another. And encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. A free and responsible search for truth and meaning. The right of conscience. And the use of the democratic process within, within our, our congregations, congregations and in society, society at, at large. large. The goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Respect for the. Respect, respect for, for the. Interdependent web of all existence. Interdependent web of all existence. Of which we are a part. Of which we are a part. What I like about this community is that it provides a framework of how we will be with each other and and where we think we should be going in the world, um, but has nothing that says, and here's what's right, you have to agree with this. Uh, and that's very important for me, so that I can have conversations with someone who is an agnostic or a uh, Buddhist or an atheist or um, Jewish background and recognize and value everything that, that, that we all bring to the conversation. So that's, I think, what CUC really does in my life, is gives me that community of, of fellow searchers, of fellow people who, who are looking for what's important in their life and what's um, valued. And, uh, and we share the journey together. So uh, that's why I'm here and why I keep coming back. It's been a pleasure and a joy watching it grow. And I look forward to watching it continue to grow. Of course, for it to continue to grow requires all of us to help it along, like a parent nurturing a child. We help it to grow, we support it, we nurture it, we give it life, and we let it go. If I had to say a few words about what's special about this church to me, it's the spirit of playfulness and freedom and trust. 
It is such a welcoming and wonderful church, and I'm glad that you have a chance to meet us, even if it's on a little bitty video picture on your computer. Well, I was a Presbyterian most of my life, and when I started dating my wife, uh, Jane, in 1998, she had been a Unitarian for 35 years, and so I kind of gravitated with her toward the Unitarian Church, and after we got married and moved out here in 1999, we joined this church. And it's been a very good church for myself. I feel quite comfortable in it. When I first joined, I used to say, I'm not quite sure whether it's a church or a social club. And after being in the church for a number of years, the answer is it's both. That it's a small congregation, and so you know all the members. Many of the mem members are personal friends of yours, and you do things with them. So it does have a social atm atmosphere to it, but it goes far beyond that in terms of how people interact and the quest for knowledge throughout life that the church encourages. And the other part of it is that this church, for whatever its reasons, has been very good at nurturing the membership that is in the church and in having pastors and church members give sermons that are very good. My thought is that if 50% of the sermons make you think that's pretty a pretty good batting average for a church and this church does that and so it does stimulate intellectual act activity amongst its members and also a very close loving relationship with of the membership it makes it an unusual church ends with the potential for great service and an abundance of love to share in more ways than we may fathom in the name of all that is divine with the spirit of life and love which dwells within, among, and beyond us, let us graciously accept this offering. Blessed be. When I come to see UC on Sunday mornings, I always strive to be what our opening words say, and that we are minds to seek the truth, hearts to feel compassion, and helping hands with the potential for great service. I'm a youth advisor and I've been really excited these past few years because our youth are members of an interfaith youth group from churches of many faiths in the Tri-City area. They've done great work and that's what these potential hands for great service is all about. Do you want to drop them and I'll cover them? Okay. There you go. Now here's the next one. Oh, good shot. You maybe ought to be a baseball player or something. That was a really good pitch. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm Heidi Newsom, and my joy is in relation to what Craig talked about today, when I asked my daughter, Lily, I told her we were making a little video today, and I said, what do you like about church? And she said, I get to be with my friends and care about other people. So I thought that was really a joy. Oh, yeah. Yeah.